Hi, my name is Dr. Russell Betts, and welcome back to the Chemistry 1032 Lab instructional videos. Today's experiment is experiment 9, titration of an antacid. Titration is a very old but yet very powerful technique that allows us to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. In today's lab, the unknown solution will be a solution of antacid. Now, antacid is just a, a fancy way of saying base, or antiacid, which happens to be a base. Now, to perform a titration, we need to have an acid. The acid, we need to know the concentration of it, and we need to know exactly how much volume we've used. If we know the concentration and we know the volume, we can determine how many moles of acid are in our test sample. We will then titrate it, or in other words, add base to it, until the equivalence point, or when all the base and acid have neutralized each other. Now the difficult thing is knowing where the equivalence point is. And to determine that, we'll use an indicator. An indicator is nothing more than a molecule that will change color depending on if it's in an acid or a basic medium. In today's lab, when you start out, you'll, you'll be starting out acidic. You'll have an indicator in there that will be red in acidic environments. As you add base, the solution will become yellow because the indicator turns yellow in a basic medium, or in a pH greater than 7. We'll use that information that we gather from the titration to determine the concentration of our original antacid sample, and we can even calculate the mass of the antacid that was dissolved in the sample. That's what today's video will uh, tackle and address, and we'll even look at some of the math, how to do the math calculations while we're at it. So with that, please... Hi, my name is Dylan Antigua, and I'm a laboratory technician here at Broward College North Campus. And in this experiment, you'll be using a plastic 100 mil volumetric flask. You'll be weighing out one gram of antacid tablet today, in today's lab into a weighing boat. You will then take that one gram and transfer it to the plastic volumetric flask, like so. We'll bend the wave boat, try to get every bit of it into the wave boat without spilling as best as you can. Notice how some of the antacid tablet is stuck to the bottom of the wave boat. You will use distilled water to wash out the wave boat into the volumetric flask. Try to make sure that you get every bit of it into the volumetric flask. More than one rinsing does not hurt. Once all of the antacid tablet has been, been transferred to the plastic volumetric flask, you will close the volumetric flask using the top and then you will swirl to dissolve. Once the antacid tablet has been completely dissolved, you will then bring up the volume inside the volumetric flask up to the red line. Make sure that the bottom of the meniscus of the water just barely touches the red line. You will do this using more distilled water. As you approach the red line, make sure you are at eye level to get an accurate reading. And be, and be careful not to go past the red line. Once you have filled the volumetric flask up to the red line, you will cap it and turn it over a couple times to mix the contents. And that's how you prepare a measured solution.
Now we will show you how to rinse the burette and put your antacid solution inside of it. To rinse the burette, simply take the stopcock and put it in the closed position. Take a squirt water bottle, squirt a little bit of water in there, you know, between 5 and 10 mils. Open the stopcock, let a little bit of water run out of, out of the bottom. You're trying to rinse out any impurities or dust or whatever that may have gotten into your burette. Once you've let a few mils run out, close it back up, turn the burette down to a horizontal position like this, and then let the water flow out while turning the burette in your hands. What we're trying to do is allow the water to coat the inside of the burette and rinse out any impurities or things that may be there. Do that two or three times just to make sure we get the burette nice and clean. You know, you want to ensure there's no debris in the stopcock area and we want to ensure that there's no nothing that's going to mess up our results or give us some errors that we don't that we could possibly avoid. Let's do one final rinse with water just to make sure everything's good. Let's some run at the bottom. Run up the top or the uh, top of the burette. Just keep rotating it so the water coats everything. Open the stopcock, let the water drain out. Now the solution that we want to put in the burette is a water solution. It's your antacid dissolved in water. But we don't want this water in here. Now we don't want to spend all day waiting for it to dry. So what we can do is take a little bit of the antacid solution that we've created and put it in here and rinse it with the antacid solution a few times. It doesn't take more than a few mils and it will get the, the uh, burette coated with the solution we want to use so we can just go ahead and use it. To do that, close the stopcock take the antacid solution, I'm going to use the one that Dione made, pour a little bit into the top of the burette like so. Be careful not to spill it. Now you might want to use a funnel for this. I have pretty steady hands so I'll, I just use my hands with no funnel. Run some out the bottom. Get all the water that may have been left in there. Get that rinsed out. Take the burette. Now just like you were rinsing it with water, just rotate the burette like so and let the antacid solution run out the top. Repeat that at the end, just to make sure that you've got all the water out of there, and this, the burette is now coated with your solution. Take, you know, five, 10 mils, don't be, don't be too shy with it. Again, let some run out the bottom, like so. Stop it, horizontal, now let the antacid solution flow from the top. Now we've rinsed the burette a couple of times with our desired antacid solution. Just going to blot the top to make sure no little drops of antacid solution run down the burette. Put it right back up. Make sure the stopcock is closed and pour your antacid solution so that it comes to the zero zero mark. Now it's always good habit to add a little more base to the burette than you need. In other words go above the zero zero mark slightly. We can always drain it from the bottom. Remember, we have to check for air bubbles in the uh, stopcock, so it's always good to add a few more mils than what you think you're going to need. We can always drain it from the bottom. Add a little bit more. There we go. We can always drain it from the bottom. So now, uh, my meniscus is above the zero, so I'm going to drain it from the bottom now. There we go. Now let the meniscus come to the zero zero mark. Just watch it closely. There we have it. That's meniscus is sitting at 0, 0.00. So this burette is ready to go. Make one quick examination right here looking for air. If there's no air bubbles, you're good. You can go ahead and start your titration. Okay. Now that we've loaded our burette, we're ready to do the titration. Go back to your station with your loader burette. Using the butterfly clamp, pull down these two little switches. Clamp your burette back up, make sure it's straight. Turn the burette and the, and the butterfly clamp so that you can uh, have it facing you like this. It'll get things arranged so that's going to be comfortable for you. Now, your burette's clamped, ready to go. Now we have to make our acid solutions. Now, here I have the acid in this little beaker. It's in the fume hood. We have the, we have the concentration of this acid written down in our notebook. Now we need to transfer 10 milliliters of this solution into each of these Erlenmeyer flasks. So let's do that now. 
You want to make three different solutions. Bring it down to the level of the, of the thing here. There we go. 10 milliliters. One. And in the lab, he would repeat that for all three. For the sake of time in today's video, I'm not going to repeat it. I'm just going to do it for the one. But you would do it for all three. Now, into this Erlenmeyer that I've placed the 10 mils of HCl, I take a 25 mil graduated cylinder, fill it with water, and I add it to the 10 mils of acid. Now, this 25 mils of water is not critical if it's exactly 25 mils. What it's doing is it's simply adding some uh, bulk to our titration so that we can more easily see the color changes. It'll be much easier to see because there's just simply more liquid here. Now, take the indicator, this is methyl red, and put in five drops of the indicator into the Erlenmeyer. Now, as you can see, the solution turned pink. Methyl red will turn pink when the pH is below seven. Place this under the burette, adjust the burette so that the tip is inside the flask so that it minimizes splattering. Make sure you know where your meniscus is in your burette. Better if you start at 0.00. And then we're going to add base to the Erlenmeyer until the color changes to yellow. That will be the equivalence point or the point at which the moles of acid equal the moles of HCl3- or bicarbonate. Here we have a zoomed in shot of a titration looking from the student's point of view down at the flask. As you can see, the solution is pink. We're going to add base from the burette and this solution should turn yellow at the equivalence point. The indicator is pink and acid and it should turn yellow when the pH changed to basic. So take one hand and swirl your flask so we can get good efficient mixing as the base is added. With the other hand, grab the stopcock and open the stopcock until base begins to flow. You don't want it to go too fast because you want to be able to catch the equivalence point or the end point. The end point is where the solution changes color. So here we go, we're just dropping the base now. So the base is just dropping in, drop by drop. This might take a little while, so be patient. Continue swirling the flask, make sure you get good homogeneous mixing, and be prepared to turn off the stopcock as soon as the solution turns to a yellow color. As you can see, the solution appears to be getting a little bit fainter. Could be my imagination though, wishful thinking maybe. Once you start to see any amount of yellow persisting, you want to stop the titration and let the titration or the flask sit for a moment to see where the color is going to stop. You want to try to hit it as best you can at the end point or the equivalence point. The equivalence point again is where the moles of acid equal the moles of base. Oh, as you can saw, or excuse me, as you can see, the solution got really yellow really fast, but it's still somewhat pink, somewhat pink. So let's add another drop of base. There we go. Still a little pink, add a little more. Yep, a little bit more yellow, add a little more base. There. I'm going to call that the end point because that looks very yellow to me. So now, at this point, take a reading off the burette, and that's how much antacid solution you add it to neutralize the 10 mils of acid we have already added.